job or you all really are not paying attention. It's one or the other. Um, so that's kind of it on, on the elevator rescue part. And again, I wanted to make it brief because once we go and do it, I swear it will all come together. I promise. <clears throat> I do want to go over emergency recall, which is called phase one and two, and fireman service. Um, a few years back, we ran a call, 11700 Old Columbia Pike, fire on the 14th floor. You know, we run that place fairly often. Fire on the 14th floor, a lot of crews coming. I think it went to a second alarm, so there's a ton of people. And you get, what's our SOP for the elevators? Two floors below. Two floors below. It needs to be more than five stories tall to use it. It's got to have, it has to have the phase one and two service and the fireman service. Um, you got to have your SCBA on, you got to have a radio, you're actually, per the policy, you're supposed to have your mask on and your, and your uh, regulator in your hand. Most of us don't do that, but it is policy. Um, that all kind of came from, I think it was Memphis. They, they ran alarm bells, big building, they get on the scene, you know, they're kind of half-assing it. Well, what they didn't see is around the Charlie side, this place was off. Crew of three goes up in the elevator. They go right to the reported floor for the alarm bells. The elevator door opens and they basically cook and die. So we, we have a policy that hopefully will help prevent that. But I'll go over that a little bit more in detail. But back to the 11700 Old Columbia Pike call. Get all these people coming. You get the 14th floor. You get people you're going to need to evacuate potentially in the elevator. And all of a sudden that what engine is it that controls the elevators in the lobby on a high rise? Fifth due engine. Fifth due engine calls back on the radio and says, "Yeah, the fireman service isn't working." Oh crap! So now the elevator. We can't use the elevators. So we go through this whole call. I'm talking like two hours of nonsense with no elevators. The elevators work just fine. They didn't know how to operate the elevators on fireman service. Has, it, has, every, has everybody operated an elevator on fire, fireman service before? All right, well, we're going to do that today. It's not that complicated or tricky, but you do need to know how to do it. And the key thing is, um, it's like a, it becomes like a manual elevator. That's the difference. You can't just push the button. It's not going to take you where you want to go. So we'll get to that in a second. Phase one recall, that's where you see the smoke detectors in the elevator lobbies. There's smoke detectors in the machine room, sometimes in the shaft. If one of those goes off, it returns the car to the primary floor at the lobby, and the cars come down and the doors open. If the smoke detector in the lobby has gone off, it will take it to an alternate floor, which is usually one floor below, sometimes one floor above. But most of the time, it's going to take you down to the lobby. It's nice for us because right away we get there, the elevators are down, the doors are open. We know we don't have a true emergency situation, which is somebody stuck in the elevator while the building's on fire. I mean, that's pucker time. So it's nice that that phase one brings the elevators down, the doors open, and you're good to go. The phase two part of the recall is the key switch in the lobby. You all get there, the elevators haven't been recalled yet. You can go to the key switch in the lobby, activate the fireman's recall, and it'll do the same thing. The elevators will come down to you, the doors will open, and now you've confirmed that nobody's in the elevators. Okay, any questions about phase one or phase two recall? Phase one is automatic. Phase two, you have to initiate. Okay, so let's get to fireman service. Again, it allows a controlled operation of the elevator by the fire department. There's a, there's a hierarchy. When you go in and you put your key in and you turn it on, you, there's a hierarchy. And basically, you have day-to-day -day operations, and then you have um, service, which is, let's say, somebody's moving in and out, so they get a key that allows them to control the elevator themselves. Next, you have fireman service, and the very highest level of the hierarchy is called inspection service. Inspection service is like the guy's on top of the car and he's going up and down and checking the cables and things like that. That's 
the highest hierarchy. Now, does anybody know why that would be the highest hierarchy? What's that? He's in the shaft. Yes. The last thing you want to do is this guy sitting there and he's got this thing on, ele on inspection service and he's working on something and you go and hit the fireman's recall and all of a sudden that elevator zips down and who knows what it'll do. When you're on inspection service on top of the car, you'd be amazed at how slow that car moves. It really granny crawls. And that's all for safety. Um, you know, our hoistway keys used to be, you used to find them in the lobby. Well, they took all those out. The code now requires them to be in the machine room, locked up. The reason is, up in, up in the projects in New York, the kids do something that's called uh, counterweight surfing. They get the hoistway key, they get into the shaft, and then believe it or not, they ride the counterweights up and down as, as a thrill. So they've, they've kind of done things along the way. Once you put it into fireman service, the fire, little fireman's hat will light up. That tells you you're in fireman service. <clears throat> now, one thing I did forget to go over, if you ever open the hoistway doors, and you're looking at a traction elevator and you see the cables and you'll always see the cables no matter where the car is because remember the same cables are connected to the counterweight if you ever open that door and you see that the cables are slack you have an absolute true emergency on your hands and that's when you probably need to call you know call for help because what that means is that elevator now is sitting there not supported by the cables it's supported by the brakes on the guides, and you, you know, that's like a last-ditch effort. So if you ever open that thing up and you see slack cables, you know, that's the time to, uh, yeah, that's the time to call for some call for help, without a doubt. All right. So when we operate, when we operate on fireman service, we we put the key in, we turn it on. Um, you would. Press the floor that you want to go to, and then you have to press the door close button and hold it, and the doors will start to close. If you release the door close button before the doors close all the way, they're going to open again. Okay, And the same way when you get to your destination, you need to press the door open button. If you release the door open button, the doors are going to close again, and that's a safety feature for us. Let's say you get up to the floor. You start to open the door, there's smoke, <clears throat> let your finger off, that thing will close automatically. So it's a safety feature for us. What's, what's the protocol for actually using the elevator? Let's say the fire's on the, let's say the fire's on the tenth floor. We're gonna go to the eighth floor. What do we do in the meantime? Okay, the protocol is before you get into the elevator, you're supposed to look up with a flashlight into the shaft and see if you see smoke. If you see smoke in the shaft, you shouldn't use the elevator. The other thing you're supposed to do is at the halfway point to your destination, you're supposed to stop and make sure all those features I just talked about work. So if, it, if it's on the 10th floor, you're going to go to the 8th floor. You want to stop at the 4th floor. You want to operate the door, make sure it opens and closes like it's supposed to, make sure the elevator stopped where it was supposed to, and then again, take another glance inside the uh, shaft and see if you see smoke. Okay. This is an incredible tool for us. You know, I'm like 35 years old. I don't need to be going up and down 15 flights of stairs. I don't. How old are you, 35. Oh, in hamster years. years. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> it's an incredible tool for us, and but you do need to know how to use it. Alright, here's the super bonus question. And Roger, you can't answer this because you heard me talk about it the other day. You get into the elevator, and you're operating the elevator. Let's say you're the fifth two engine, and this is you've become basically the elevator bellboy. You know, you're moving the elevator up and down. Your fireman's hats have lit, and all of a sudden they start flashing. What does that mean? It does mean oh shit. But what does it actually? What's what? Why does it mean oh shit? It means oh shit because the smoke detector, either in the shaft or in the machine room has gone off and has sent smoke. Okay, 
If you have smoke in the machine room, you got to assume that you might have a fire in the machine room. If you have a fire in the machine room, you can't count on riding that elevator. The last thing you want to do with this building on fire is you be the one stuck in the elevator now trying to get yourself out or call for help. So if that light is flashing, the use of the elevators is done. Yeah? Will that flash only in fireman service or all the time? No, that will only flash after it's gone into fireman service. No, that's not true. Depending on how it's wired, it should flash any time that those smoke detectors have gone off. Because the new, the new fire alarm systems, we can do that. It'll flash any time. So um, if it's flashing, does, does it You're done. If it's, if, it's if it's flashing, I would get off that elevator as soon as possible. Because what's coming next, if you're a sprinkler building, what's coming next is there's a heat detector located near that um, sprinkler head. And if that heat detector goes off, it's going to shunt trip the power to all the elevators. <clears throat> So if you see that light flashing, you get to assume that pretty soon there's a chance that that elevator is going to stop working totally. The, the other thing about the keys, a common, common mistake that's made is sometimes we hit the Knox box, there's one set of keys, you get one set of elevator keys, you go, you know, we're running 1133 University Boulevard, we get there, 16 gets there, we all pile into the elevator, we do our things, we go up, you got to remember to turn the fireman service off here at the key. And the reason, and you leave the key in it. And what will happen then is once you all get off the elevator, then the elevator will go back down so the next group of guys can use the elevator. If you, if you put it on hold and take the keys, the, that elevator's done. And if they don't have another set of keys, there's nothing they can do. If you leave it on on and leave the keys in there, that elevator's not going anywhere. But if you turn it off and leave the keys in it, it'll go back to the lobby and somebody else can use the elevator. When would we ever be under our protocols? When would we ever have an elevator that's being used in fireman service that where you don't have somebody controlling the lobby, uh, controlling the elevator? Well, if, remember that's that fifth do engine right. company. Before that does but, that. But I'm, like, this would be before that. Oh, I see. Okay. The, so, like the first two that's going like to use it right away. Okay. The Knox box we're going to go to on Amherst Avenue only has one set of keys. No, so that's a, no. I was, I was. That's right. Yeah. First two that need to get up there quickly. Yeah. makes sense. I was thinking once you have the fifth. Right. Once the, the fifth two gets there, you'd be fine. Okay. You could have somebody controlling it. But uh, and, and I can't tell you how many times I've cussed somebody. You know, a lot of the high rises we run, we're not first there. You know, we run down to Silver Spring. I can't tell you how many times we've gone there, and yeah, the first, you know, one engine, oh, they were a piece of cake going up 15 floors. Well, guess what? Everybody else had to hoof the stairs. Okay? Any questions? We're almost done. We're almost running out of time. Okay, real quick, I talked about um, hydraulic elevators going away. This is probably going to be something new that's going to be tricky for us. It's a machine roomless elevator. All of, the elect, all of the actual mechanical gear is actually located inside the shaft. Now what you'll still have is a small room with the controller and the disconnects. But here's the catch-22. It can literally be located anywhere in the building. So I, I have a building in DC I inspected and for whatever reason it was up on the third floor. So to find now to find that room and that disconnect is going to be a lot more tricky. Is that building obligated to put some kind of placard on there to say that? It piece? should be on the fire alarm enunciator. Should be on the fire alarm enunciator. Now it just so happens I made a call to um, the people that are building, uh, you know, the new Safeway high rise, and I figured it would have these new elevators, but it does not. It has the traction elevators, but like we're used to using. What's the advantage or disadvantage of putting all that stuff in the shaft like that? You don't have to take up space with a machine room. And in, you know, in the real estate world, it's all about space and leasable, leasable square footage. So we don't, I don't know what we have in our first due that has these, but we're certain to run into them eventually. It's going to be tricky. The new science building at the Rockville campus of the college has it. Right. So okay. if anyone wants to see it, it's there. All right, so that's it for the presentation, except for one thing I want to show you real quick. Anybody have any questions where we're at so far? Okay. 
You were two elevators in the new squad. We were, but one got cut. We needed one. One was at the front entrance to the hall, so that's for the public to use. And then the budget had one in the back to service the uh, hall kitchen. But for now, that got cut out. It may come back, but that was one of the things we had to cut out. Who got the back out? All right. This, this is, I shouldn't say this is funny, but this is pretty fucking funny. <laughs> Okay, so this woman's on the elevator, she gets in the elevator, and this guy in the wheelchair is pissed off because he missed it. He's really frustrated. He's missed the elevator, and you know how heavy these wheelchairs are. So he kind of loses his mind here, and he's like, fuck this. And here's where he should not do it again. Shh. Jack is so funny. Shame. you feel bad for the guy. I mean... <laughs> He and the only reason I threw that in there is, you know, we we deal with the public all the time, and there are times where you you know it's that Darwinian theory, that lowest common denominator that we deal with that does incredibly stupid things like this. And once he did that door, it came unpinned at the bottom. Uh, I hope he was going down. He died. He definitely died. So I don't know how. I don't know how far up it was. All right. So um, what are we doing to get everybody up to Amherst? Wagon.